Hey guys and welcome to another video! This time I decided to make another Harry Potter themed, well, wizard or witches themed video because I will be selling this particular print at a Harry Potter themed convention I'm organizing and being a part of right this month in Belgrade. So this will be an awesome event and I wanted to combine two of my favorite things, manga style and Harry Potter. So I will be drawing some sort of um, uh, OC of, of a sorts, a uh, character inspired by my favorite uh, Hogwarts house, Ravenclaw, and just placing this little character and her pet cat in this universe. So I hope you like what I make. And I decided to make a bit slower video so that I can explain a few tips and tricks during this 15 minutes, well, longer than the regular 5 minutes video. So you can always ask me for tips and tricks and I will always listen and try to give some pointers on how to draw cute characters and what, what types of tricks to use when drawing them. Um, when I decided to draw out my character, I uh, wanted her to have a real nice and flowy pose. So her upper... Uh, so she has like um, one arm up on her um, hat and the second one just floating freely so that I have a more dynamic pose. If you switch the height of your arms and legs on your characters and even add some moving clothing and moving hair, you will make an illusion of a wind. Wind is really important in a lot of illustrations because it really sets uh, this drawing different and apart from a regular drawing. This is some sort of a trick trick a lot of artists use to make the drawing look alive. So whenever you want to uh, make a character look like they are moving, always remember to use wind. Wind sh shifts your character's hair, it shifts your character's clothing, and every little detail, like little bows or um, big details like capes, they all go in the same direction. Try not to mix up and like make the hair go to the right and the cape go to the left. It will just confuse you and confuse a lot of people who are trying to figure out what's going on in your drawing. So I decided to design this little character and I have a really... I have a thing for pink hair so I decided just to draw her with long hair with big bangs and big sideburns. Well female-ish sideburns and just to make her like um, I used a combination of Lolita fashion and the the witch uh, garments and school uniforms that uh, you can see in all the Harry Potter movies so I just didn't didn't want to give her the regular uniform I wanted to design something that says uh, traditional witch but still have some cute manga details and similar details more accustomed to manga style than to Harry Potter universe. Uh, I also designed a special kind of medieval sleeves on her but combine it with fluffy white gloves you usually can see on many manga characters. Um, also a fun fact, uh, many Anime characters actually have white gloves, if you must have noticed in many games or manga or anime, a lot of characters have white gloves and this is something that's a really old thing, you can see even in the first anime series ever made, it's because, um, I don't know if 
any of you or some of you know, but manga was heavily inspired by Disney. Disney characters like Mickey Mouse, Goofy, etc. They all had these white gloves, so you can don't be uh, alarmed if you uh, uh, recognize a lot of anime characters having white gloves because it's something that's really inspired by the history of manga and it's just something one of those details you can see on a huge number of manga characters or anime characters if you have any personal favorites wearing white gloves you can always uh, describe them or mention them in uh, in the comments below the video as for other pieces of clothing I really love placing the the house um, the house scarf on this character which I later color in and a lot of you have asked me about the little black dots on my characters you can see me drawing them right now and these little dots are actually miniature triangles uh, which you should place on the line art wherever you feel there's a tiny shadow uh, also a trick you may want to use is to use thicker lines to draw out something on our character which is closer to us as a viewer so you can always like uh, for example, I use the same uh, same thickness for lines everywhere except for her eyes, but I could have used a thicker liner for her arm, but I didn't want to waste money and buy too many liners. This, this one liner is really all that you need for a good line work. As for coloring in, Copics or any other type of markers are a good thing because they save up time, but you can get all of these same results as uh, with markers with just using watercolors. Believe me, I have a lot of experience with watercolors and I can definitely uh, make the same results and make the same type of shading with watercolors. The only problem with watercolors for me personally is that they take a long time to dry and I can't afford that amount of time and that is why professionals use alcohol-based markers because they dry more quickly but still there is no need for you to waste money on markers when you can do the same kind of shading and results as with them by using watercolors uh, this is unorthodox for me for this particular drawing to be using fully colored surfaces. As you can see, I am going to color in the black cat of our character completely without uh, leaving any white areas on it and I will do that for the clothing as well. It takes a lot of time and a lot of you have asked me about patterns these markers make. Um, there will, I will be completely honest, there, there will always be um, a lot of st stripes and some textures you don't want on your characters because you want the color surface to be completely smooth, but to try to get the smooth surface you need to have several coats several several layers of the markers and one trick i see a lot of artists use is to uh, fill out the surfaces by uh, repeating circular motion like scribbling in tiny circles uh, but the problem one complication regarding uh, manga markers, uh, well, alcohol-based manga markers, uh, is that they dry too fast sometimes for you to switch between colors or shades and have enough time to blend in. Sometimes artists have to use several markers at one time and like have entire armfuls, well, handfuls of 
different colors in their hands, make a mess of their table, make a mess of their arms and clothes and just try to blend in everything before um, the markers dry out completely. And sometimes uh, that, that's one fair warning for anybody who wants to uh, start working with uh, alcohol-based markers is you can't leave markers anywhere near warm surfaces, uh, sunlit windows, um, uh, lights like uh, table lamps, because any heat sto any heat source uh, will just evaporate the alcohol from the marker and the marker will become dry. So if you leave your marker anywhere open or open near a light heat source, you will be able to just throw it in the trash afterwards or buy a refill which is expensive so take care of your markers if you choose to use them as i said you don't need to use them you can always use watercolors for the same effects and if you want to be a professional and need to work a lot with markers you can then afford to get some sets of markers. Uh, as I was saying, you can see me filling in her pink hair with circular motions and you really need to work for hours if you wish to make a good decent texture, a uh, smooth texture. And I'll, some people uh, ask me why do I uh, fill in the entire surface with color first then go over it with a darker shade. Uh, some people consider that a waste of markers. Um, I have to agree with them, but uh, I sometimes think during my drawing about uh, changing light sources or improvising on the spot and sometimes I just don't know um, where I want to place my shadows on the hair or a dress. And that's why I always fill in the surface first and then choose where to place the darker marker areas. Also, there's another thing regarding this. Um, sometimes with shading, sometimes with shading uh, surfaces, uh, there's a bit of a blending when you cover one marker with another shade. Uh, you may get um, colors which influence one another. That is the main reason why I don't use black Copics at the start of a drawing, because if any lighter, draw uh, any lighter Copic touches this black Copic, they will blend together and the lighter Copic, Copic will get dirty and then it's not that usable, it will smudge, it won't... Uh, work as a vi vibrant color anymore so be careful about uh, these types of mixing colors always place lighter colors on your drawing then proceed with the darker ones and this will save you a lot of stress and a lot of ruined markers because you don't want the black marker to destroy every other color you have probably Especially when you have a limited amount of markers or refills and you just can't afford for more. And you can always play around and leave the edges of the clothes white, like I did here, so that you can either save Copics or just make the dress look more shiny or interesting. And I always tend to leave a bit of white edges on parts of clothing so that they look like they're like they're 3d like they're separated from the character dangling in the wind and just being shiny and a little bit closer to the eye of the beholder and for final touches i decided to just dab a bit of green for her emerald necklace and decided to fill in some additional shadings on the scarf before proceeding with the background. I almost never do a completely detailed background because that influences the amount of work in general, but this time I decided to draw out some special shapes like a shape of a castle uh, or some other 
symbols for the witch theme in a sort of a smoke. As you can see, I'm using circular shapes with a marker that is almost, well, dying um, to get a little blending action, a little bit of a smoke action so that I can proceed with drawing out little cauldrons and potions and witches flying behind our character, but I'm using a neutral gray color so that the background never um, bothers my eye or anybody else's and just eats up the character. Be careful not to use uh, strong colors for the backgrounds, otherwise your character will be invisible in all of the, the colors. And for the final touches, I really recommend Pilot white gel pen. It's a magnificent pencil and Pilot is my favorite Japanese brand. So if you ever come across this white gel, gel pen, I recommend it with all my heart because I was able to make a snow or glitter effect and white lines or, or around the cat or any details that are popping up in only a few minutes. And here she is, she's done, and you can download her in HD quality on my Patreon page. You can see the link in the description. Yes, guys, if you want to learn to draw like this, uh, all my secrets regarding the posing of characters, designing characters, uh, line work, shading, anatomy, etc. is available to you in my Manga Crash Course book, available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble's website, Barnes & Noble's bookstores, uh, your local art bookstores you can even ask around. Uh, I hear a lot of American bookstores have my book in them, even some Norwegian ones, uh, as I learned recently and don't be afraid to ask or order through your local art bookstore and see you next time!